Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the Sealed Tournament of the Century presented by MTGWorld.com. This is the first semifinal match between David on the left and Will on the right. As we saw from the quarterfinals, Will is playing a black and red deck. Uh, he's got a lot of gray ogre type creatures, a hypnotic specter to help him eke out early and mid-game advantage. He also has Barktooth Warbeard, a black mana battery, and an abundance of mana hungry X spells like Hal from Beyond, Drain Life, Disintegrate, and Fireball. David, on the other hand, is playing a Grixis deck, primarily black, but also splashing blue and red for sundry creatures and removal. I think he has a Singer Vampire, uh, Fallen Angel, and about 12 pieces of removal. I think I've seen David just play about every piece of removal available in Alpha and Legends. So both players have lands in their opening hands. So it looks like it might be a keep. Looks like David has a Psionic Blast, a Nettling Imp, a Remove Soul, and some lands, and it's a card I can't quite make out in the back. And I can see a forest in Will's hand. He is splashing a single green card in his deck, a giant spider. Though from what I can recall, he hasn't yet had a game where he's been able to cast it. All right, so it looks like Will elected to draw. Seems like after the quarterfinals, players figured out that this is a drawing format. A couple rounds of land go. There's a pyrotechnics. All right, we got our first action here. We have a raging bull, a two-two for three. And there's a control magic off the top for David. Yeah, probably the best uncommon uh, in the format. Mm. They sure don't print cards like that anymore. The trend seemed to be back in the old days that creatures were way too weak and a lot of spells were way too strong. Even mind control, which costs one more mana than control magic, hasn't been reprinted since M12. All right, David's down to 18. And Will plays a black mana battery. So uh, this card you can tap for a black, uh, or you can pay two and tap it to add a counter to it. And whenever you tap it to add the black, you can remove any number of counters and add an additional black for each counter removed. So it looks like David's gonna go ahead and Sionic Blast the Raging Bull immediately. So that does four damage to the bull and two to himself, bringing him to, down to 16. Who needs a counter spell when you can just Psionic Blast? Is there anything blue can't do? And Scathe Zombie's off the top for David, but it looks like he doesn't have access to black mana yet. Yeah, I think he has another island in his hand, maybe? No, he's, he's just choosing to discard a card for turn. All right, Will is... And there's this one. There's Skate Zombies for David. All right, well, has two counters on his battery now. So he's got access to nine mana, now 10 mana total, but doesn't really have anything to do with it. Will down to 18 after that attack from the Skate Zombies. David's got a bunch of reactive cards in his hand, but uh, so far Will hasn't really played anything for him to react to. Looks like a nettling imp. Will ticks up his mana battery. And and there we go. That's a Barktooth Warbeard. David's taking a quick look at it, probably trying to decide if he just wants to kill it or steal it. Barktooth is a 6-5. Oh, and it's legendary, let's not forget that, which back in Legends meant harder to cast, and does absolutely nothing whatsoever. And here comes a control magic. Four mana, take control. And gets in there for three. Will down to 15. He's got virtually unlimited mana. 
But does he have anything to spend it on? Yeah, it looks like he might be getting quite flooded. He does have some cards in his hand, but... I think he might have had an earthquake. So I guess that would be enough to kill the bark tooth, right? And and the zombie. But it wouldn't get, get rid of the nettling imp because it's a flyer. Earthquake only hits players and creatures without flying. Now, Will's got so much mana, maybe he could Earthquake for 8 here and then hope to top deck a Disintegrate or a Drain Life to finish off the game. Yep, looks like he opted to use the Earthquake. I believe he Quaked for 7, taking David down to 9 and Will down to 8. And he uses some of the mana from his uh, battery along with a Pendlehaven to cast a Giant Spider. So what happened to the Nettling Imp there? Not quite sure. I thought it had flying. Yeah, so did I. Um, but... Looking at the card, the art clearly depicts a diminutive winged creature about the size of a book that clearly would be able to fly, but it just doesn't have flying. I think this is what game designers are referring to when they say something is dripping with flavor. Anyway, also interesting is the fact that Will actually left one black mana floating at the uh, end of his second main phase. He removed three counters from the black mana battery. Now, remember, the black mana battery gives you a mana whether or not you remove any counters from it. Uh, in the past uh, games, it kind of seemed like Will didn't know that because he made some plays that made it seem like he thought he had one less mana available than he really did. I, I think this just actually confirms that he doesn't know what black mana battery does because black mana battery gave him four mana and he got a fifth from Pendlehaven, and he only needed four mana to cast that giant spider. So, um, you know, moral of the story is read your cards, folks. Sometimes it really does make a difference. Anyway, while I was ranting, a wall came down, a Hurlun Minotaur was cast and had its soul removed, and a giant strength was played on that now doubly giant giant spider. David passes. Looks like there's another giant throwing strength getting on the giant spider. That's a very giant, giant spider. Or actually, it should be giant, giant, giant. And Man, that's terrible. a very dead, dead, dead spider. <laughs> well, I mean, you can scare it to death no matter how big it is. Really unfortunate that will didn't have another creature there so that he could go wide so, with his so david just drew a singer vampire but he did not ha he does not have a second black source to be able to play it and will has basically unlimited black all right now we have a wall of bone so that's a one four and it regenerates for one black and david another land but no black mana Holding a Pyrotechnics, Fireball, Fallen Angel, also requiring two black, Drain Life, Singer Vampire. Looks like he's hitting him to the face. Yep, David Fireballed for six, putting Will down to two. That means next turn the Pyrotechnics will get the job done. And David flashes that pyrotechnics in his hand, which is enough to get Will to scoop. Okay, I've skipped over about eight or nine minutes of sideboarding and shuffling. David didn't actually make any changes to his deck, but Will sure did. He completely removed the green splash, so out went all the forests, the giant spider, and one other card we couldn't quite identify. In their place, he stuck in some islands, uh, an active volcano, what looked like a Segovian Leviathan, and possibly a Remove Soul. So clearly Will doesn't quite think that his deck was working for him and wanted to make some drastic changes. I think these games aren't working for Will, because, or at least the first one, is because he isn't using his patented uh, one-card cut. I agree. I mean, if something is lucky for you, you should stick with it. After one round of mulligans off camera, both players are currently down to six cards. Hopefully no more mulligans. 
Let's see a pirate ship, swamp. Looks like a paralyzed wall of bone, mountain, and a swamp king. All right, no, that's a, so. It's two lands and looks like he's keeping two lands and a bunch of high drop, a bunch of creatures that cost more than two. Looks like Will's got a couple lands too. So we gotta keep on both sides. We have a scry, and they both keep. Swamp pass from both players. I feel like we've seen this before. Looks like Will just drew a blue elemental blast. Between the board and their hands, both players have access to all of their colors. An actual gray ogre this time, instead of the raging bull. I can't help but feel like slow starts like this favor David when he's got cards like Singer Vampire in his deck. That is a lesser werewolf. Most importantly, that lesser werewolf can either keep that gray ogre at bay or just attack into it freely. It also has this weird ability where it can kind of pseudo wither creatures it engages in combat with, but I've never actually seen it used. That's a jade monolith from Will. Jade model is kind of interesting. It can give you some nice double blocks or allow you to attack with a horde of smaller creatures into fewer larger creatures, but I question whether it's likely to be re very relevant in these removal heavy matchups. All right, so and the werewolf's getting in for two. Knocking Will down to 18. And here comes the Swamp King, an unblockable 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five Swamp Walk, and whenever a player casts a black spell, you gain one life. And the answer for it, a blue, blue Elemental, elemental blast. blast. Sulkinar does have red mana in its casting cost. A great answer from Will. David and Will both at 18. I'd imagine Will's feeling pretty good about his audible into blue right now. All right, Will down to 16. And David plays a pirate ship. Ooh, very dangerous. This is one matchup where that pirate ship is definitely able to attack. I can see an earthquake in Will's hand, um, so he does have the option of clearing the board here. There's some uh, white bordered lands from David. Looks like he has a mix of alpha, beta, and unlimited lands here. Well, unlimited is David's favorite set. But Will's wondering where his hypnotic specter is right about now. It carried him on his back through the quarterfinals and then went home apparently. Now, if Will waits too long to pull the trigger on this earthquake, he very well could be at too low life to use it. Okay, so Will does cast Earthquake, clearing the board. Earthquake for... Four. Three. Four. David follows up with Escape Zombies. So after that earthquake for four, David's at 14 and Will is at 12. Will now playing his Celestial Prism. And David attacks for two. Will's at 10. Once again, Will's deck not uh, giving up the goods. He just plays a land and quickly passes. David attacks for two more. Will's at eight. And yet again, Will just plays a land and passes. The remaining card in his hand is an active volcano, which really doesn't do him any good here. And a bloodlust on that Scathe Zombies gives it six, six. power. And it's a six one now, so Will is at two. 
And he packs it up. Looks like he got flooded quite a bit again this game. Yeah, but I can't help but wonder if Will wouldn't have been better served with creatures in his deck as opposed to Celestial Prism and Jade Monolith. Anyway, David moves on to the finals where he'll face the winner of Adam versus Guillaume. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe.